What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a selection and turn the text bold in italics for our text widget with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at turning text bold and italicized whenever you select it. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so moving along with our little text widget thing that we're learning about, in this video I want to show you how to first select text in your box, right? And then do something with that selection. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to change things bold by clicking a button or unbold or italicize them or unitalicize them and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, we're learning all kinds of cool stuff about this text widget because there's so much you can do with it. And like I've said, eventually we're going to put all this together and make sort of a text editor. And that's probably coming up pretty soon. So first, let's go ahead and look at selecting text and then like doing something with it. It doesn't really matter what you want to do with it. Just... Maybe you want to delete it, maybe you want to, you know, use it as a variable to do something with later on in the program. Who knows? Who cares? How do we select and then sort of identify that we've selected something in a text box? So let's look at that first. So I've got this file text underscore write dot pi that we've been working on the last couple of videos. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So let's come down here to the bottom and let's create a button and let's call this select underscore button. And that's going to be a button and it's going to be in root and the text will be select text. And then the command will be, let's say select. Now let's select underscore button dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y of like, I don't know, five or something to push it down a little bit. So now let's come up here and create our select function. Now this one's actually really, really easy to grab text from a text widget that we've sort of highlighted with our, our mouse like that. All we have to do is call your text box. So my underscore text dot, and then we just call selection underscore get. And that will get whatever we've highlighted in the text box. So really easy. So uh, let's just call this uh, selected, create a variable. And now remember, we've got this label that we've been playing with, my label. And we can use that to just output whatever is on the screen. So let's go mylabel.config and set the text equal to selected. So whatever we've highlighted, we want to then output that in our label below the text box. So, all right, let's go ahead and save this and let's run it. So let's go text underscore write dot pi. Pull our program over. So let's open our text file and let's say we want to grab this best wishes and we can select it and then boom, here it outputs best wishes. If we want to select elder, we can boom, grab it. And now we can do anything we want with this once we've selected it. We can delete it. We can, you know, use it as a variable for something else. If we want to maybe add it to a database or something, anything at all you want to do, you can now do by sort of selecting this stuff. So, okay, that's cool. So that's the easy part. Now we want to talk about changing selected text to bold or italicized or any other things like that. And this is actually a little bit tricky. There's a bunch of moving parts to this, but it's not complicated. There's just a lot. A lot going on here. So our text widget here has something called tags and we can create tags, we can add tags, we can remove tags and we can do things with them. So what we're going to do basically is select some text and then apply a bold tag to it or an italics tag. And inside of that, inside of the tag itself, we'll then do whatever we want to do, make a thing bold, make a thing italicized, whatever. But uh, the tag is the, the, the main part and then the what you want to do with it is sort of the secondary part. And in this case, actually, the secondary part is a little bit more tricky than the, than the tag that itself. So let's just jump into this and see. So let's head back over to our code and let's come down here and under our select button, let's call this uh, bold underscore button. And this is going to be a button and we want to put it in root and we want the text to equal bold. And let's give this a command of bold. So let's then put this on the screen. So bold button dot pack, and let's give this a pad Y of like five, push it down the screen a little bit. So, okay, now we've got this bold command we need to create. So let's head up here to our functions section and let's go define bold or let's call it bolder. 
right? So let's come down here and change this to Boulder. I don't like to use the same names as things we're going to do inside the function because sometimes it could go a little wonky and uh, cause problems. So we'll call this Boulder. Now, first off, changing the font inside our text widget can be a little tricky. So we're going to actually use something in Kinter called font. And we've not actually looked at font before. I'm not going to talk about it in great detail in this video. We're just going to kind of use it and kind of roll with it. So let's go from T Kinter, import font. This allows us to do fonty things, right? So, all right, let's come down here and first let's create a variable. I'm going to call it bold font. And we want to set this equal to a font dot font. And notice the capitalization here. Now, what do we want to put this in? We want to put it in my underscore text, our text box. And then we want to call my underscore text dot C get and then font. All right, so this is sort of setting the stage for what we want to do later with our tag. So now we can go, we can configure our new bold font variable. So let's go bold underscore font dot configure. And what do we want to do here? We want to change the weight of our font to bold. All right, so up here, we're sort of defining the thing. We're saying, hey, get the font, which is part of this thing. What do we want to do with that font? We want to change the weight of it to bold. Okay. So now we've got sort of our definition of what we want to do, the second part of the thing. Now we need to sort of create and configure our tag. So let's go my underscore text dot tag underscore configure. And now we want to change bold. And then what font do we want to use? Remember in the past, we've gone like Helvetica and changed the size. But now we're going to use this bold font that we sort of defined ourselves. We kind of created this, right? So we can go boom, bold font, and that's all we need to do there. So now we need to do a little bit of logic. So imagine our program, when we click the bold button, if the text is already bold, we probably wanna unbold it. That's why we're probably clicking that button. If the text is not bold already, that means we probably wanna make it bold. So we need to write some logic to determine whether or not the text that we've selected is bold or not. So we can do that. First, we need to define our current tags that we have. We've sort of created one, but not quite yet. So let's go current tags. And let's set that equal to my underscore text, our text widget, dot tag underscore names. Now, we want to select, so we want to check the first sort of thing that we've highlighted. We've selected text. Right? Whenever we drag our mouse on our text box to select some text, that's a selection. And we can say the first thing that we select, like the first character versus the last character. Right? That's how, how selections work. When you highlight an area like this by dragging your mouse, this M is the first character that's been selected. This S is the last character that's been selected. And then Kinter can kind of know all the things between the first and the last are whatever. Right? So that's Another way that we use selection, slightly different than what we just did up here with this selection dot get underscore get. So basically we're saying take the current tags of whatever's selected first, right? And those are going to be our tag names. So now we can do our logic. And I know I'm kind of running through this and it might not make a whole lot of sense, but it will once we finish it. So I'm just going to kind of go through this. So let's go if, and let's say bold that we defined up here right in our tag configure if bold in current underscore tags. So it's saying basically, hey, look in our current tags, grab the first thing that's selected. If it's already bold, then we need to remove bold. Right? Else add bold, right? So this is the logic if if our current tag, so if we look in the selection, and like I said, the first thing that is highlighted is already bold, then unbold it. Otherwise, it's not bold already so that we can now bold it. So how do we actually remove the bold and add the bold? Well, we can just remove the tag, the bold tag, right? So we, we, configured, we configured this bold tag. And I should say the first thing here is the thing that you, the name of your tag. The next thing is the thing that you're doing to the tag, basically. So we've created this bold tag. So now we want to remove that bold tag. So we can do that by calling my underscore text dot 
tag underscore remove. What do we want to remove? We want to remove bold and we want to remove it from a range of, of, of characters in our widget. What range? Well, whatever's selected first and selected last and everything in between those two things. So that's cell.first for selection.first and then cell.last. So like I said, when we, for instance, I've highlighted tag names. This T in tag is the selected first thing. This S in names is the selected last thing. And this is basically saying, hey, grab everything that's bold that's between these two tags, the selected first and the selected tags, and remove that bold tag. So if we remove the tag, it's no longer bold, right? So same thing down here. We can go my underscore text. In fact, we can just copy this whole thing, paste it in, but you would probably guess right if you said instead of tag remove, we want to tag add. So remember, if the thing is not bold, then we want to add a bold tag. What do we want to add it to? Everything between the first thing selected and the last thing selected in our text widget. So, okay, hopefully that made a little bit more sense. It's Friday and it's, you know, I'm dragging a little bit this morning, but I wasn't super clear explaining that, I don't think, but hopefully you get the idea. So at least when we go through italicizing, maybe running through it a second time will help clear it up. So let's go ahead and save this and run it and make sure that worked right. So we can open our text file, grab our sample text, let's highlight best wishes and bold. And there we go. So if we unbold it, we click it again, boom, and unbolds. Click it again, it bolds. We come up here, now that's bolded. We can bold everything we want, right? We can select it, otomy.c, right? Okay, so that's bold. Now ital italicizing is a little bit different because we're not changing the font weight. So let's just jump right in here and start doing this. So let's come down here and let's go italics underscore button. And that's a button. And we wanna put it in root and we want the text to say italics. And we want the command to equal italics underscore it. <laughs> I don't know. I like to change the name, you know, so I, italics er sounds weird. So italics it, right? So let's italics underscore button dot pack, give this a pad Y of like five, push it down just a little bit. All right, so let's come up here to our function section and let's define italics it. And just like with our bold, we wanna create a, a, a variable and let's call it italics underscore font and set that equal to again, a font dot font. And it's gonna be my underscore text. And again, we want to my underscore text dot C get the font. Okay, now up here, we dot configured and changed the weight to bold. Here, we want to change it a little bit differently. So we go italics underscore font dot configure. And instead of changing the weight to bold, we want to change the slant to italic. All right, so you can see right here, we changed the weight to bold. Here we're changing slant to italic. So that's the main difference really. So then we can sort of create this tag, configure it. So we can go my underscore text dot tag underscore configure, just like we did last time with the bold. And we wanna create a, a tag called italic or italics, call it whatever you want really. And we wanna set the font equal to our italics font that we just defined right here, All right? Again, that's all there is to it. And so here, let's copy this current tags guy. And again, we need to define that. And just like before, we can run our if statement. In fact, we can really just kind of copy this whole if statement up here. So let's copy this, paste it in. But now instead of if bold, we want if italic, because that's what we called it right here when we created our tag, right? And then tag remove italic and then tag add italic. Otherwise, the rest of these things stay the same. Okay, so same thing, we're just, if the text is already italics, we wanna remove it. If it's not italicized yet, we wanna italic it. Italic it? <laughs> we wanna italics it. <laughs> All right, so let's save this guy. Head back over here, run this guy one more time. Open our text file, and let's grab our best wishes. Boom, it's italics. Change it to bold if we want, italics. Add some bold up here, whatever we want. 
There we can select this, boom, codemy.com, and we're moving right along. We still got our scroll bar thing that we looked at in the last video because Tkinter rocks. <laughs> And uh, just that easy. So tags are really, really useful with the text widget. You can define them in the way that we did, where you name them and then you just set the uh, what you want to do with them, change the font or whatever. Uh, the font, the, the defining fonts that we did in this video with importing that font thing from Kinter is a little different. Maybe I'll do a video in the future if people are interested on what exactly we can do with that whole font thing. Uh, but you know, that's the gist of it. And uh, that's cool. So it is Friday here in Vegas. Looking forward to the weekend again. Hope you guys are too. And we will see you next Monday, I guess. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeby.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. Say so page is $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeby.com, and I'll see you in the next video.